Hello everyone, welcome to CIO Leadership Live. I'm Kirat Attar, Content Strategist at Foundry, and I will be your host for this episode. Our guest today is the Senior General Manager of Digital and IT of JWIL Infra Limited, Prasenjit Mukherjee. Prasenjit, it is such a pleasure to have you with us. My pleasure to Kirat. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, sir. I hope this will be a very interesting conversation. Uh, I'd like to start by asking you to tell us a little bit about JWIL Infra and your role and responsibility as the Senior General Manager of Digital and IT of this organization. Uh, Kirat, uh, uh, good afternoon to everyone again. And uh, uh, JWIL Infra Limited, uh, if you expand it, it is Jindal Water Infrastructure Limited. So uh, we are more or less a uh, EPC, which is Engineering Procurement and Construction Organization uh, into water infrastructure uh, with uh, ONM of water infrastructure or, or as a water utility, what you can see. Okay. So uh, it is a part of the Jindal Group. It's part of the PR Jindal Group. Okay. And uh, uh, we are having all the projects uh, in India and abroad, which are 100% B2G projects. Okay, these are all government projects. In India, definitely these projects are under Jaljivan Mission projects of Government of India. So state-wise, there are different kind of projects what we do in India. Okay, that's about JWL. It is more or less a, a 15 to 17 year old organization uh, with a good uh, market uh, uh, presence and visibility for such kind of projects in India and abroad. Now, as far as my role here in JWIL Infra Limited is concerned, uh, uh, I'm the CIO and CDO for uh, JWIL, wherein uh, I'm responsible for ensuring the company's digital, IT, and information security strategies aligned to the growth of organization and in this competitive era, because we might be a B2G kind of organization, but uh, to bring in that business, there are competition in India and in the international market. Okay, so overall, uh, 31 years of experience, leadership experience working in the uh, enterprise segment as uh, IT head or CIO, okay, uh, responsible for business audit, business uh, transformation. And in JWL, definitely the, uh, see, uh, in EPC, there are different kind of organizations. It may be a, uh, EPC company, which is for road-based project, it may be an EPC company for oil, it may be an EPC company for gas, okay, uh, for energy, if I say, okay. Uh, water in India is still at very, very uh, nascent stage of development because everybody in India thinks that Amera, uh, we birthright hai. I need to have water, okay, and that too free of cost, okay. I need not pay for water, but for gas and oil, you cannot say that I won't don't want to pay and I want to consume it, okay. Yeah. So that is the reason that development on the IT uh, digital side or uh, on the IT roadmap, yes, it is now happening, okay. But uh, uh, the other EPC verticals, they have actually reached a uh, uh, some kind of a maturity stage, but this is under a growth process. And that's the positive side for me and my team here. That's this is a huge opportunity to do a work, to bring in new things and bring in new technologies, okay, here, which definitely will help the organizations to have a larger wallet share in the market, okay, uh, to have a great growth path, okay, and to be a leader. We are anyway one of the leaders in our area in India, but to be one of the leaders uh, in this particular industry. Okay, so that's how it is. Uh, so let's jump into some of the work uh, that JWIL Infra is doing in this space. Uh, for instance, you are providing end-to-end -end solutions to your you know, clients who are in the water sector. So could you speak a little bit of these solutions that you provide to your clients, be it drinking water providers or they're in the uh, yeah. sector yeah. or okay. in the industrial effluent treatment sectors. Rightly, rightly. I mean, it's just the second uh, question what you asked uh, aptly uh, aligns to the first question. Uh, I said that uh, we do all B2G kind of a project in India and abroad. Okay. There are more or less uh, four to five different kind of projects what we do. Okay. Uh, the first is your uh, irrigation projects. 
Okay. So what we bring in for our client for such kind of project is uh, provide water to the assigned designated villages to the farmland okay, for a sustainable crop. Okay. And all these things, I say that is the EPC organization. We do the engineering, we do the procurement, we do the construction. Okay, so for an irrigation project, there will be a water body which will be identified from where the water needs to be pumped out. It may be a river, it may be a dam, it may be any kind of a water body for that particular state. Okay, so the construction on the river, on the water body is first to be done. It's a huge engineering design and construction which happens, okay, which actually will pump out water from the running river. Okay. And then the water through a transmission line is taken to a water reservoir, which also needs to be built up or constructed and designed and constructed. And then from there, water is taken through different distribution channels, to different pipelines and distribution channel to multiple villages, multiple fields. And water is provided on a timely manner as defined in the government contract. Okay, suppose this particular village, this particular area will get water from this time to this time. Okay, so that automation is also needed. The start time and the close time of a particular pump, which will actually pump water to that particular area or a field. Okay, so and also a billing mechanism to actually generate the revenue for ourselves. So that is one model for irrigation. Second comes drinking water. For villages. Har ghar jal. Government of India's Jal Jivan Mission Project. Okay. Har ghar mein jal hona chahiye. So there also again a water body is identified. A design is made. A intake well is constructed on top of that. Water is pumped out through huge pipelines from that particular river or dam or water body. And then that is taken to a water treatment plant. We also design and construct a water treatment plant. WTP, okay, and there is also a huge engineering. There is automation. There is SCADA, and all these things comes into that place. And once the water is treated, it is taken to a clear water reservoir. From there, it is pumped to different overhead tanks or underground tanks to the respective villages. From there, through a distribution channel, taken to all the huts or the hutments in a particular village. So till the last mile, till a tap, the uh, laying down of the pipelines, creating that particular distribution channel, creating the transmission channel, building the water treatment plant, okay, creating the intake well, and to give a time-based water to that particular village or to that particular place is our responsibility. The third is urban water. Urban water is more critical. Uh, urban city like Delhi or Mumbai or Bangalore, okay, how do you have a distribution network and provide water to the last mile, including metering and billing of that particular person. And there, actually, you have to have a different kind of a flavor wherein you have to bring a customer experience also. In villages, people don't care about a customer experience. Exactly. But when it comes to a city like Mumbai, Delhi, or a metropolitan city, or in an urban place, okay, you actually need to have a customer experience built up. It may be customer experience related to what time they receive water, uh, their, their metering should be done, done on time, their billing should be error-free billing, they should have a proper payment gateway to make their payment instead of there. All their uh, uh, issues should be addressed at the first time, okay, and the right time. So this is a different kind of ball game. Okay. Fourth entity is my sewage treatment plants. Okay, wherein we, uh, it is again a contract with the municipal corporation. Like in Mumbai, we are with BMC. Okay, so uh, the entire uh, uh, waste, waste, it goes to our sewage treatment plant where the entire treatment happens and the output is again, can be recycled into some kind of industrial water. So, then we have uh, our uh, CTPs, common effluent treatment plants, okay, wherein 
in different places where industrial waste are brought in and we actually does we, we do the treatment of such effluents and ensure that uh, we reduce the pollution on the earth uh, so to carry out such diverse you know activities you also need to be technologically in a place where these things are seamless so could you tell us a little bit about the technology that helps in these solutions for instance the remote sensing technology the automation technology and the digitization processes that are leveraged in your organization see uh, what is it uh, initially that ours is a epc and a water utility or which is operations and maintenance so any kind of project we take over first there will be around 3 to 4 years of building the entire uh, project okay which is the part of the engineering procurement and construction phase and once that's it, that that is over it is handed to over to the operations and maintenance team, team which goes on for around 10 years 15 years 20 years we need to manage uh, and give the services to that particular respective uh, uh, project okay now i will take the digital part or the automation part under these two heads epc and onm part it is not a single thing so as far as my epc is concerned the first thing in epc what we need to take care is my project management okay because it's totally a project management end to end i have a start date i have a end date defined in the contract by the government okay if i have a slippage in my end date i will be penalized i will lose money okay uh, i won't get my return because the faster i complete my project i get my return and it is handed over to the onm, ONM department or operations department to have a recurring monthly income source as we uh, give us the service uh, give the services so the backbone or the bottom line for such kind of projects is project monitoring okay i need to monitor my project for my progress for my adherence to timeline and also to see how do i have a cost optimization done during this entire project phase there are no slippage there is no cost leakages which are happening so all this needs to be monitored so and there, i said that in this phase there are three pillars which is engineering procurement construction and these are entities in themselves within the organization there are departments in themselves and the worst part for epc companies i'm not talking about my, our organization major in epc companies they don't talk to each other they're very siloed yeah they design it it is pushed to the procurement for procurement as per the design element okay procurement is happening but sometimes what happens is engineering needs to do a quality test that whatever they have designed it the material which is procured is as per that or not and then procurement team when they push the material to the site the construction team starts working and how do you ensure that the procurement don't push the, all the material at one go or else we'll have a more stock in our stores which we cannot build unbuilt stock what we say okay so i purchase i dump it there my construction will take around 2 years time but why do i purchase it at the very first point time and dump it dump it it is my unbuilt stock yes. okay so they don't talk to it so how can we bring in a integration there should be one platform one digital platform which takes from the very first go till the last till it is handed over to the onm it should be a single platform visibility to a single dashboard project wise comparison between project to project a different kind of time kind of project where are we slipping where are we going right where we are off track on track so this is the place where we have to bring in digitization as far as project management is concerned when it comes to the onm phase there we have because i said that there are different kind of projects if it is a urban project i need to bring in a customer experience i need to have a, a latest uh, uh contact center for resolution of issues of people a, a place a digital yeah. okay it may be uh, a call center state of the call center 
Okay, it may be it may be a it may be voice bots or chat bots through which customer can interact. It may be my uh, website, which is a self-sufficient website to help the customer. They need not or an application or a mobile app for the customers. Okay, uh, it may be my uh, maintenance team department who are on the field. Okay, how do they ensure that my equipments before they fail? Okay, they get a update. Okay. Or if there is a breakdown or a shutdown, automatically the data moves to a customer port. Yes, tomorrow I won't have water from this period to this period. Yes. So these are all customer experience proactively. How can you ensure all these things? How can you help, how can I help my ONM team to reach the right place at the right time without wasting time? So that if there is a uh, uh, there is a leakage in a pipeline, how can they reach the right place, the right time? and solve the issue faster through GIS mapping. Okay, and the GIS mapping on the app. Okay, they reach right place. Fair enough. Uh, thank you for telling us about the specific sort of technologies and challenges that are involved in this particular you know, space. Um, from your prevalent current technology, I'd like to move to some emerging technology. And I'd like to ask, talk about AI, which everybody is talking about. <laughs> While its applications in the software space or maybe the analytics space is being quite thoroughly explored, I'm particularly intrigued about it, about its application in your domain, that is in the water management, holistic water management space. So are you leveraging generative AI in your domain? And if you are, then what avenues has it opened up for you? See, uh, currently, if I, in a single uh, word, I will say we are in our journey for the same. We have not yet implemented but yes, we are on a journey for the same. Uh, but yes, when we talk about uh, AI in the water infrastructure industry, okay, it will play a big role. It will play a very big role. Okay. And this is the right time where we should catch up with such technologies and implement it for our business. Because see, uh, bringing in different digital uh, technologies there are data which are getting generated. It may be data from the IT side, application side. It may be data from the OT side. Okay. So there are data which are getting generated. Second is there are climatic changes which are happening. Okay. Huge climatic changes which are happening. And the demand for water is increasing day by day. Because a country like us, population is increasing. Okay. Okay. Uh, people uh, people are needing more drinking water and if we can reach or we can take the water to their doorsteps instead of them going to the river or these ladies who used to go in the villages to the river to bring water, if that we can finish, so the demand of water has increased. So AI will play a different, different like the first thing what I can uh, uh, understand where in, in our journey we have all these things mapped up, like predictive maintenance for my entire infrastructure using AI. Okay, like if there is a failure in my entire operations, okay, I won't give a good customer experience, number one. Uh, uh, there will be definitely a wastage if there is a failure. My revenue, uh, there will be a revenue loss for me. So how can AI be helping us for my predictive maintenance? Second is, I said that the demand is increasing. Can I do a prediction of demand? And do a prediction of demand and uh, do a data, uh, water data monitoring. Okay. Because the entire life cycle of water from a raw water to a treated water to the to tap water or whatever. Okay. So how can I predict that demand based on that? And actually, we can also, it will help me uh, between demand and supply, I will tell you uh, there will be there will be uh, there will be months in a year in a particular state where the water demand will be less. It may be during winter seasons, okay, or the demand will be high during summer peak summer, okay. I need to have a predictive model. Accordingly, I will be running my plant. I won't run my plant to my full capacity during winter. I know that my uh, demand is less. Why do I waste my energy? Why do I waste electricity? Why do I waste? Why do I add uh, pull in more water from the river 
let the water flow on the river why do i pull water from the river and put treatment to do a treatment using chemicals on that Not so that. Huh, so so i can do all this now this is how i can optimize my energy usage in the wtp and all this area how can i do my asset management okay using ai another use case what i am looking in ai is uh, for business development okay i have multiple data available stored data how can i increase my win rate in my business development uh, how can i ensure that there are no leakages in my enter transmission or distribution pipeline no wastage of water or for the example my water treatment plant area or my sewage treatment plant area there are high chances of air pollution because of many things in a sewage treatment plant there will be air pollution in that particular locality or uh, in a water treatment plant there are chemicals used there are water air pollution how can i ensure that uh, i can use ai to take care of my air pollution at what level i should keep it so there are many many use cases what we can bring it in uh, this okay my legal can use uh, gen ai for the same yeah. okay so that actually gives us a whole lot more insight than what i think i also had and maybe our listeners also would not have had as to how it's such a uh, it's a very diverse industry it's very different from the software applications of ai but there yeah. are so many applications for it nonetheless true uh, going quickly into the sustainability portion of holistic water management uh, what are jwil's sustainability goals and as the person who heads maybe it and digital for the organization uh, how do you contribute towards the company's sustainability goals and do you or does does your department have sustainability goals of its own uh fine let me first for come for the organization okay uh, the organization sustainability definitely uh, uh, being in water industry uh, it is a, a resource earlier it was a renewable resource but i think uh, water slowly slowly it is getting depleted okay from the earth okay because of high usage because of misuse of water in a bad way we only do it okay we open our, open the tap uh, for more number of minutes than we require we do a wastage of water okay uh, wastage of water happens during uh, uh, the purification process wastage of water happens during uh, transmission process there might be some water pipeline burst okay so the first thing what we should what we do is do water camp water uh, saving campaigns how can you save water okay because see water is such a thing if we don't think today each one of us tomorrow we need to suffer and there might be a world war because of water yeah okay uh, because everything is dependent our life the food we eat okay so everything is dependent on water so how can we save water use water in a optimized way okay uh, how can we how can we generate a clear drinking water uh, using very less chemicals technology will come in this place okay uh, in fact uh, this is also in my uh, road map uh, using digital twins Uh, to ensure that uh, we have a optimized uh, water clear water getting generated from our water treatment plant okay uh, how can we ensure that the more the sewage uh, how can we uh, generate more uh, industrial water the water which can be converted from a sewage uh, to a water which can be pumped into Uh, industries for their use many industries use okay they, they should not use uh, drinking water they should they should use such kind of water uh, and many many industries organizations use it okay many plants they use it industrial for cooling or cooling their uh, furnaces and everything okay uh, so industrial water is needed okay and industrial water can be generated not from the clear water but it can be done from the sewage water so that's how it is okay how can we because how can we support agriculture this is because this is where we sustain okay uh, so the time based manner what we we provide water to the villages and right down it should not water should not go, go waste we can provide water to the villages but ideally 
is that water being used for cropping or just it's flowing on the field? Okay, so all those things should be known. Okay, we should install uh, intelligent water meters. Okay, uh, so that uh, and with sensors, so that there are very less wastage at the last mile and also from where we do a distribution. Okay. Then uh, how can we reduce the leakages and waste by bringing in technology? I told you like, uh, how can we predict there is a leakage in the pipeline? Okay, there are water not getting waste going out. No one is using it. Okay. Uh, so from IT, I told you that we, 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 we are on this particular journey of bringing in different kind of automation, sensors, IoT, smart meters, okay, to help the business. Because as I said that, as IT or digital, it is for business. It is, IT cannot work in silo. Okay, so it is the business demand. It is the demand of the organization for sustainability. Yes, IT is there to support. Okay, now as far as if I talk about my IT part, core IT part, okay, uh, side, then definitely we uh, take uh, endpoint devices which are having... Uh, less compute power because the more the compute the more energy it will get okay. so why can't have my compute on cloud okay so i i did not have a compute at my endpoint yes there might be one or two departments like the engineering department they need a high level of compute okay but not for everybody so that's how we classify in front of us so that I, I consume less of electricity and energy okay mm -hmm. Uh, and everything happens from the cloud. Okay. Now, how can I extend the life of my devices, endpoint devices, or my users? Okay. Uh, generally, there are policies where people try to they buy laptops or they buy all these devices and they uh, retire it in three uh, three years or four years or five years. Can I extend it for one or two years more so that I don't put a pressure on that? Okay, or if I if 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 I can refurbish my uh, spares from the OEM and continue with the same laptop for one or two years more. Okay, so uh, how can I do my EVS management when I'm retiring my laptops? So these are the all different initiatives what we are doing in the organization and aligned to the business need or requirement. Thank you. Uh, they do seem like strategic initiatives, maybe even just small decisions that you are taking which will contribute to the larger goal of sustainability because sustainability by itself seems like a very huge almost insurmountable goal but if you break it down in the manner that you mentioned I think uh, because we are doing many such many such programs here for suppose we we, we we are in charge of the west delhi uh, water distribution okay mm -hmm. so we do many campaigns for water saving water sustainability uh, getting uh, uh, Aligning with the different uh, resident welfare association, taking programs, doing programs there, uh, Nukar Natak, which is what, what you say, okay, uh, showing the people there that how you should save energy or water rather, how should save water, no wastage. So there are different campaigns. We are we 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 are doing a campaign with uh, Tata Energy Research also, Terry, okay, on water sustainability. Uh so this this brings me to my final question. Um, as the CIO and CDO of JWIL Infra, you are pivotal to driving digital transformation in your organizations. And all of the technologies and initiatives you've spoken about thus far, you know, points towards that. Can you discuss how digital transformation, which may include automation and remote sensing technology and you know AI as well, how has it revolutionized the water management space? and help your organizational initiatives? And is there anything that you are looking forward to exploring in the future? Let's assume in this year, 2024. See, I think uh, maximum of the things, what uh, this industry needs and what we are doing and what we plan to do. I think I have already discussed all these things in yes. the past few minutes. Okay. So uh, yes, uh, as far as the digital is concerned, uh, we, uh, I say that, we try to work uh, with our partners. Okay, we try to work with our partners who are experts in their own area. It may be uh, uh, partners who give uh, cloud services. Okay, uh, we are also we take services from hyperscalers. Uh, 
uh, we we work with partners who are champions in application development okay uh, we work with partners uh, or we are now speaking to partners who are having expertise in uh, gen ai or uh, artificial ai okay uh, we are already doing projects uh, on digital twins uh, wherein uh, the monitoring the progress of the entire project through digital twins okay okay uh, wherein progress as well as cost, how can we take care of that? And then migrating to the NFAs. So uh, we are working with partners with everything. If you talk about the cloud and, and for information security also. Okay, we have a, our information security posture already there for last one or two years, which has been good. But yes, uh, uh, we need to actually, again, come back on some kind of a uh, reassessment of this entire posture and see that because as we are growing, okay, uh, we need to fortify or secure our entire business uh, operations uh, from the bad actors. So that is where it plays a very important role. Okay, and how do we enable or ensure our business development team uh, to be in the market? Okay, using uh, AI and also using. Uh, Augmented reality, that is another area which I missed to tell. Yes. Okay, BD can be used, uh, it's augmented reality is a great use case for our business development team, our HR team, and also for our uh, operations team remotely if they can uh, give support okay. to uh, many uh, plants. Okay, so uh, there's reality? a pardon? Augmented reality? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there are many things which are there in our roadmap. And uh, uh, I say that I want us to be the leader, not a follower. Okay. Before any other uh, organizations, Indian born organization mm. of our industry, uh, we want to bring in all such things and we want, need to be a leader and actually have a rather larger market share for this. And uh, trust me, it can only be done through such digital backbone. Else, manual mode working, it has been going on for years. Yes, and it has its limitations. It has its limitations. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, that answer and such a, a well-rounded end, perhaps, to this interview. Uh, so yes, we are at the end of this interview. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your answers, which were so transparent and so detailed about the way that you're dispensing your responsibilities and JWIL's initiatives and aims to provide water for everyone because it is noble and it is also uh, pragmatic and it is one of the goals of this country. Sure. So you have such a contributing you know, role to play in that is a very, very big deal. So thank you so much, sir, for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a ton. It was a nice talking and I think I've, I've been able to uh, explain that what the industry or each one of us should be responsible citizen to save water and to ensure that uh, we have water for our next generation. That's true. And that is a that is a message that I think each one of us should carry in our hearts because we are borrowing our resources from the future. So yes, ours... yes, very true. Uh, this brings me to the end of this episode of CIO Leadership Live. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.